Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God in heaven, we come to you tonight, Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. Thank you for seeing each of us safely here. Protect the kids as they're at the retreat, pastor and all the workers. Uh, let them have a great time and be in filled with your Holy Spirit. Bless this team tonight, Father, as you know we need help. <laughs> so we just ask for your uh, forgiveness ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> And ask that you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore Yeah, y'all can be seated. (laughs) 
you are up to something good when I don't understand the things that happen in my life. I'm going to believe that you are up to something good. Said you never would forsake me. That's what you said. And through the fire I will take thee. That's what you said. So when you don't answer my prayers the way I think you should, I'm going to believe that you are up to something good. You know, uh, I talked about this a little bit before, and I don't think I told the whole story. When I was in prison, we used to have to walk about two football fields to go down to the to the mess hall, and when you first get in prison, they put you in what they call a quarantine. They, they check you out and everything, and I can remember we're in white jumpsuits, and I can remember standing out there against the wire, seeing this old man walking down the bowling alley. Bowling alley is about a mile strip of concrete, and all the buildings are just sitting on it, and that's it's how you made your way. You stayed in between the lines, and you went from building to building. If you were ever going nowhere, you didn't get out of line, and I seen this little old man walking. And he's walking like this. I said, man, I'm standing up against wires. I said, what is this dude doing here in prison? This dude's going to mess around and get killed, you know? And we went in, and we went to Chow. We walked about a block and a half, two blocks down there. We hit Chow. We came in. And you go through a Chow line. You get your plate. You go sit on a hot table. And by the time that line fills up behind you, it's time for you to get up and get out. And uh, so we eat, and we get out, and we go back, and I'm standing on the building out, and I look down, and he's still going. Just like that. I'm thinking, man, what is that old dude doing in a prison? Well, about a month later, I got transferred into a dorm, and a couple of weeks after that, I finally got to go to church. You had to, when they hollered church, you had to beat it to the door, man. You had to be the first one in line because they only let seven money go out. And uh, I finally got in, I finally got on, got hip to the game and, and got there on time, and I got to go to church. And I'm sitting on the front row, man. I want to get me some Jesus. And I'm sitting on the front row, and the choir's singing and everything. And then all of a sudden, the choir set, quits, and I hear, I'm going to believe that you are up. To something good. And when I turn around, it's that little old man. And he sung that song all the way down the side, all the way up the ramp, all the way up to the podium. And then he brung the word. That man's name was Chaplain Bartosh, and he was about 82 years old at the time. He had Parkinson's. He shook real bad. But he loved us guys so much that he persevered through all of his pain, through all of his struggles, so that we might catch a hold of that belief, that we might catch a hold of something and be able to take it with us when we left there. I didn't only take Christ with me when I left there, but I took that song. You see, through his perseverance, through his strength, I can remember one day about, I guess it was about, about a year after I got out of prison, I was driving down the road, and I was just having a tough day, man. When you get out of prison, you're just constantly saying, get thee behind me, devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. I mean, it's just, it's just a fight. It's just a fight. And I constantly had to say that. I had to constantly say that. And I remember Chaplain Robinson singing that song, I'm going to believe. And I just started humming it and singing it in my truck. And before I knew it, everything that I had in my mind racing behind me was just behind me. And it was like God had to will. And I said, man, I could do this. And I've been singing that song ever since. When something comes up against me, when I've got a struggle in my life, when I've got something going on, I just break down. And I say, you know what? I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe that you're the God that you say you are. I'm going to believe that you're as powerful as you say you are. And I believe that you're going to take me through that fire that I'm walking through right now. Amen? Uh, about, a, about 18 months after I was out, I got to go back into prison and give my first talk. And uh, I did a pretty good job. I studied that thing for months. And I did a pretty good job at it. And uh, at the end of a Kairos, we always have a guest speaker. 
somebody that's done a whole lot for the prison and stuff. And uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, Chaplain, he's already passed. You know, he's 80-something years old. I've been out of prison three years. That guy was barely making it when I was there. Well, I led off that talk that weekend, that Saturday. Gave a pretty good talk. That Sunday come closing time, what did I hear? I'm going to believe that you are up to something good. And there comes Chaplain Robinson. And he's not, I mean, Chaplain Bartosh. And he's not walking like this. He's walking like this. He had had exploratory surgery on the back of his brain. And they had wired some things in there. And he was able to grind control of some of his reactions, some of his thoughts. He, I had forgotten the power of God. See? Chaplain Bartosh persevered. Persevered. Ever since the beginning of this book right here, God has called us to simply believe. That's all he told them. That's all he told them. Listen, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. He said, just simply believe. Moses said, who do I tell Pharaoh that I am? He said, you, you tell him, I am who I am. That's all you need to know. I am who I am. But we constantly, constantly, constantly mess it up. Thousands of years we've been trying to get it right. We cannot persevere. We cannot hang on to the belief that God is who he says he is. Amen? Monday, we always have a Monday morning breakfast, and we talk about the week past and the week ahead. And uh, I don't know how I ended up with all this music on my desk, like I'm fixing to sing up here or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, and Albert, he had, he, at that, during that breakfast Monday morning, he said, hey, uh, I want to need you to teach Wednesday. I'm like, oh, huh, yeah, okay, okay, I can do that. And, and my big mouth, I said, well, I'm going to teach on perseverance and the children. Well, you know what? In my mind, I'm thinking, I always talk about Paul. I always talk about how smart Paul was and how he could take the gospel to you right where you were at, whoever you were, whatever your need was, Paul could meet it. He could hit you right there. In my mind, I'm saying, that's what I want to do. I want to take the gospel to these people that are, that are chewing on a little bit of the meat. And then I want to take that same thing to them children. I want to teach them about perseverance. Man, what a great idea. And so before I knew it, I just told Albert, yeah, no problem. I'll do the same teaching both places, just different levels. Man, that's not easy. Huh? That's not easy. We, we, I'm going to talk about it in a minute, but we, we had to tear this church apart Monday and then put it back together. We had a big concert here. Me and this young lady right here ran our butts off for two days. And then I had to go put this together. And then me and that man right there made a, a prison meeting last night that was great. Wasn't it great? I'm going to talk about that in a second, too. But it was great. And we made it through it. We made it to this far. And, uh, but it's been a wild week. And before I put this on... I want to tell you about this. This is a clog in the prison pipelines. This is a ministry that anybody coming out of jail, anybody coming out of prison, doesn't even matter. You had not even been to prison. You might have somebody in prison. You might have somebody in jail. It doesn't even matter if you ain't been to jail. If you're digging, dealing with an addiction, or maybe you just want to come. We're having church every Tuesday night right down here. What is that? All right, Thursday. No, it's Tuesday. Tuesday night. Greater New Lights. Yesterday was Tuesday, brother. You are a little older than me, right? It, it, it's Greater New Lights, Bab Greater New Lights Missionary Baptist Church. It's right up the road here, not two blocks up on the left hand side, a big big church. You're more than welcome to come. It's a bunch of preachers and, 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 and just men of God going in there and allowing anybody to come in, sit down, talk about your problems. Nobody interrupts you. doesn't matter what you want to talk about, what's going on in your life. It was great. We were there for about two hours last night, wasn't we? And there wasn't nothing but the Word of God spoken. And uh, we, had one, we had about five men from jail come. Uh, and then we had a couple of men stand up and voice their opinions. It was great. 
and uh, he was really good. He was really good. And speaking of church services, uh, Sunday even, evening, my, our motorcycle ministry, where's Juan at? There he is. Mine and Juan's motorcycle ministry, a ministry we're involved with, is going to be having uh, services on the second Sunday of every month. On the 8th, it'll be here at 6 o'clock. Anybody's invited, okay? It's, not a, it's a biker's church, but it's not a biker's church. It's for anybody. It's a bunch of guys and women that just love Christ. And we feel like, a lot of us feel like we don't have evening services. So if you want to come and get pumped up, we're going to be here. This, this come on the 8th, it'll be here at Calvary Chapel, Waco, okay? So, uh, what, I'm going to put this on real quick. I hope y'all can see it, and I'm going to explain it. And, oh, thank you. I was just going to point at it, but I'm going to put this headband on. Can you see it? Can you read it? Can you see it back there, Eric? All right. Can you read it? Can you see my shoes? Do I need to turn them up? They're good? Okay. All right. I just want to make sure everything was turned up and we could see it. So what we're going to be talking about here is perseverance, like I said. Um, and there's no other place really to learn about perseverance. Paul talks about it a little bit in, uh, in Romans. And there's some in Colossians. Colossians. And, uh, but, but James, the book of James talks about perseverance. And uh, it talks about godly behavior. There's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of uh, of doctrine in there about how you're saved or what how do you get saved or where do you go about. But there's a whole lot of godly behavior. Uh, so uh, there was four men. I'm going to start right here. There was four men uh, in, New, in the New Testament named James that were candidates for the authorship of this epistle. Uh, but nobody more likely than the half brother of Jesus. Now, uh, James, the half-brother, and I say half-brother because who was Jesus? He was God's son, wasn't he? Yeah, so uh, they were his half-brothers. He had, and James didn't really believe in him. Uh, you can see that, and you can see that he's his brother in, cha- in, in John chapter 7, 5, and then uh, he be- starts believing in 1 Corinthians 5, 17. After the resurrection, he starts believing in him, and you can see that in Acts 12, 17, 15, 13, and 21, 18. They called him James the Just because he, he followed, he was so much after righteousness. He just, he, he just believed so much in righteousness. Matter of fact, I think that's what, what got him killed. He was martyred in, in AD 62. He was stoned to death, which was a capital punishment. Uh, and you can find that in Acts uh, chapter, well, in Acts chapter 15, he wrote, a, he wrote another letter in Acts chapter 15. Uh, and, and the book of James was written 44 A.D. to 49 A.D., somewhere in there. It's the earliest written book in the New Testament. And like I said, it's, it's a book full of, of godly behavior. Um, teaches you how to persevere. So we're going to look at persevere here for a second real quick. And at, first of all, I want to say this. If any of my slides are out of track, where's Lori? Where's she at? We're going to get her right there. Lori helps me put this together on my slides and stuff, and uh, we kind of got confused a little bit while ago. But perseverance, uh, perseverance, steady, persistent, and a course of action. You dig that? Per- per- steady, persistence, and a course of action, a purpose, a state, etc. especially in the, in the spite of difficulties, obstacles, discouragement. How many of us have been told that we're believing a bunch of junk? Huh? How many, how many of you been told, ah, you believe that junk? Huh? You believe that junk? You got to hang on to it, man. You got to hang on to it. And theologically, it cont- uh, continuous in a state of grace, to, continuous in a state of grace to the end leading to what? Eternal salvation. Huh? That's what me and you are standing, standing the course for. You know, the Roman, when Paul's day and James's day, uh, uh, the Roman soldiers were everywhere. They wore all this, this armor and everything. But on their shoes, they had shoes that had spikes on them. Okay? And they would dig them shoes in, and they'd put that shield up, and they were steadfast. They wasn't going nowhere. 
You wasn't kicking them down. You wasn't knocking them down. They were just solid. That's the way we have to be in our relationship with Christ, okay? You and I can't be, we can't fidge a little bit. We can't turn a little bit. See, when I give the devil a little bitty toehold, guess what? He's got that whole foot in there. And you know what? Next, he's got me out of the way. And I'm just going, oh, what the heck happened? Or I find myself sitting on a hot bunk in prison somewhere. So we can't compromise at all. We have to persevere. We have to persevere. Uh, I've got to make sure I'm on the right page here. All right. So if you want to turn to your Bibles to the book of James, I'll give you a minute to get there. We're going to get started here. When you're there, just holler, Amen. Amen. Jerry? I was just wondering, man. I was just wondering. I thought you were asleep with that hat down there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, James 1. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Now, James is saying, James, a bondservant of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody know what a bondservant is? I've taught this before, but this is cool, man. When God showed me this, I thought it was so cool. Do you know what a bondservant is? A bondservant was somebody that had a debt, okay? And they couldn't get out of that debt. So they had to go be a slave for somebody else. They had to literally just give their life to somebody else. And you just do whatever. Well, then that bondservant, when he finally got his debt paid off, he got to thinking, hey, man. My life with this guy is pretty good. I just, I think I want to be your servant forever. And they would take him over to the door of their house and they'd run an oar through their ear and knock a hole in it and then they'd put a gold ring in it. And that gave him status above all the others. It gave him status above all the others. You know, that's exactly the way God wants you to come to him. He wants you to be his bond servant. He wants you to come to him on your own and just follow him completely. Give him your all in all. When God showed me that, I was like, oh, man. I try to give it to everybody I can. You've heard me say, when I, when I get something, I want to give it to somebody. I want something to take it and give it to somebody else. James, a bond servant of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The 12 tribes scattered abroad. The 12 tribes, he's talking about the Hebrew people. You know that because Jesus said that in Matthew 24. He talked about the 12 tribes being the, being the Hebrew people, the Israelites, which are scattered abroad. Scattered abroad, mostly talking about, probably talking about either the martyr of Stephen, uh, which you can see in Acts chapter 7, where they scattered. But most likely, it's talking about Herod Agrippi, where in uh, 31, 34 A.D., he started persecuting the Christians, and that probably scattered them everywhere because he said scattered abroad, and they moved on everywhere. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Man, does that make sense to anybody? Huh? I'll tell you what. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. In this epistle, James, uh, James talks, it says the brother in 15 times in this epistle, re referring to believers, people just like you and me. He's talking to Christians, okay? They not, might not be as mature as you are, but he's talking to pe people just like you and me, accepted Christ into their life. That word count, uh, it could be, could, could be translated consider, okay? My brother, consider it all joy. Consider it all joy when you fall into various trials. I don't know anybody who's jumping up and down when they lose their job or they have a wreck or, or when things are going on in their life like that. But James says, man, you be happy about it. You grow about it. We're going to find out why. We're going to find out why, okay? Perseverance is what James is talking about. You know, perseverance shows up in a lot of different ways. There's, uh, there's several different ways to persevere. I want to tell you something. I want to tell on myself a little bit because I'm not, ashamed, I'm not ashamed to stand up here and, and tell you about my life. I'm not ashamed. You know, I was telling my beginner's class a couple of weeks ago, there's nothing that anybody has that you can throw at me that's going to stick. Do you hear me? There's nothing that you can throw at me that's going to stick because I walk in a way that is according to God. Do you hear me? The law has no bind on me. And that's the way you should be. 
somebody say something about you, you say, they might be talking about the old man. They might be talking about something happened 15 years ago. But you know what? That man's dead. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, old things have passed away. All things have become new. Huh? We've got to learn how to walk in that. We've got to learn how to live that. Okay? I got this bandana on for a reason. You know, trials and tribulations comes in a lot of different ways. I told you we had a party here Monday night. I was here from 7, about 7.50, till 9 something that night. And I was tired. I was tangry. <laughs> yeah, tangry. I was tired and I was angry. And uh, I kind of chewed on Chrissy a little bit. I didn't chew on her. I just kind of nibbled on her a little bit. And, uh, and uh, if that's okay. That's all right. Because I'm big enough in my walk to say I'm sorry. And she's big enough in her walk to say I know. And, uh, and we'll go on about it. But anyway, everybody was gone. We finally got everybody out of here. And there was one guy back here. Just had to see. Uh, what's his name? Brian uh, Trejo? Trejo? Brian Trejo. He just had to see him. Had to see him. So I walked past it, and I let it go, and I went and came again, but he just stayed, and he stayed, and he stayed. Finally, I went back and asked security. I said, you want me to do something about it? He said, I got it, brother. I said, okay. So five more minutes go by, and that's when I went back, and me and Chrissy had our deal. And uh, it was really me, wasn't Chrissy. She wanted to pray for me. I said, no, I'm good. I said, you know, anyway, I should have let her pray for me. But anyway, I go back out, and this guy's leaning up against the wall here. And I said, man, I'm fixing to handle it. He goes, no, he's leaving. So the guy left. And uh, so I went out. and Because and Brian Trejo had his entourage out in that little building out there, AC blowing. They had food out there. They had water out there. They had all that stuff out there. And uh, I'm going to knock one of these off here in a minute because I get excited sometimes. Um, and I went back there, and I knocked on the door. And... Uh, and I opened it, and they were all in there doing their thing. He's sitting over on the couch with his phone. I said, hey, man, check it out. I said, my name is David Ochoa. I'm an assistant pastor here. Man, we got all the kids inside waiting to take a picture with you. I'd appreciate it if you could hurry up. And he says, oh, man of God, brother, I got you, man. Because that's how, that's, how that's how they talk, you know. <laughs> and he said, oh, man of God, I got you, brother. And when he said, man of God, it fell right all off of me. It fell right off of me. You see? You see, all of us ought to have this on our head. We ought to have that tattooed on our head. You see this shirt? This is my second one. We ought to have this stuff tattooed on our head. Because when we start acting the idiot, somebody can go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see that? Huh? Be real. Be real. Don't sit there like you're perfect. Oh, yeah, that's him. Bible, Bible says that he that says he has no sin is a what? That's right. That's right. And the truth is not in him, is it? That's right. Every one of us lose it every once in a while. Perseverance and, and, and troubles come to us in all different kinds of ways. Do you understand what I'm saying? It ain't just the big things in life. It's the little things. I have some friends that are going through heck right now with their kids. And, and their kids might not be Christians. And they're Christians. And some of them are new Christians, but they're persevering through it. Do you hear what I'm saying? They're doing the only thing they can do, and that's trust God. Trust that God is who He says He is, and that He's going to walk them through that. And just understanding that whatever happens, it happens. It happens. But it's God that's going to lead us through it, guide us through it, direct us through it. Huh? Man. We were talk- I was talking to Mark yesterday, and he was talking about this Brian Trejo. Tre- tre- uh, how do you say? Trejo. He was talking about Brian, and, and I'm not trying to make fun of him. I'm not- he was talking about uh, how this guy, he's a rapper, and he made a song about his brother getting killed. His brother got killed. And his mom, all his mom wanted to do was persecute that guy. He just wanted, his mom just wanted to persecute him, persecute him, persecute him. And all Brian wanted to do was see if this guy could find salvation through his Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Huh? 
Is that perseverance? Is that pushing through? Is that walking through it? Is that allowing God to say, you just get out of the way and let me handle this? And here I am. I get a little tangry. <laughs> I think we all need shirts like this. This is my second one. When I was, when I was, before I came to Christ, I used to wear Budweiser and weed shirts and everything else, you know? <laughs> yeah. I did. But when I came out of prison, I wanted to represent. And that's what each one of us need to do. We need to represent Christ all the way. All the way. I don't know what that is, but I'm about to trip over it. I don't think we got them yet. Yeah, we need to represent. We got a lot of people here that are persevering, pushing through a lot of stuff. A lot of little stuff, a lot of big stuff. I seen a couple the other day in the back. I'm not going to mention them, but they're going through the same things in their life with some of their kids and some of their grandkids. And they were persevering together and they didn't even know it. They were working it out together and they didn't even know it. They were sharpening that iron together and they didn't even know it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Huh? They were representing Christ and they didn't even know it. Huh? I don't do that all the way, all the time, the way I should. I don't do that all the way, all the time, the way I should. I think that, I think that all, we all need to read the book of James and learn how to act. I think we all need... You know, this chaplain Bartosh, I seen him give a guy a Bible one time. And I said, hey, I want one of them Bibles. He said, well, do like him and, and study the whole first chapter of James and memorize it and come in here and tell him. Man, it took me two months walking around our dorm. <laughs> Just studying James, just studying James. And then I'd get it wrong. I'd have to run to my bunk, open my Bible. And I'd walk around. And, and I got it down. I got me a Bible. I got me a nice Bible. Yeah. Yeah, I sure did. My brother counted all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Patience. This is where your joy is coming in. This is where your happiness is coming in. In 1 Peter 1 7, it tells us that the genuineness of your faith, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, but it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's where your happiness comes in. That's when your joy comes in. When he stands before him and he says, Good job, my son. That's your joy. I learned from my mistakes. And you've got to learn from yours too. I talked about some of, some of the people pushing through it and how some of the ladies was out there talking. They were sharpening iron. You know what? what? What I go through and all my struggles and all my pains, I seen my brother David Stevenson, I seen him help just walk Mark through it. Just, just God, just, he, he might not even have to say nothing. He just might just sit there with him. He might just cry with him. He, he, but through his loss... He was able to comfort another one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Through my pains, through my suffering, I might ease some of yours. That's where your joy comes in. That's where your peace comes in. And then when you stand up here and you're standing before Christ, and He's going to say, good job. Good job. He's probably going to thump me on the ear and say, that's for Chrissy. <laughs> The genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. Ooh, man. What is that saying? That gold that perishes. Your faith shouldn't get burned up. Huh? Huh? Gold that perishes. And your faith's more precious than that. That gold gets burned up. What about your faith? How many times we throw that down? Testing is to purge or refine. Purge or refine. Boy, he spends a lot of time on me. Reheating me and pouring me back through the strainer, huh? Man, didn't see that dirt the last time there, son. Man. Do I have one more on that one? 
No, I don't think so. All right, let's go on. James 1.4, is everybody there? Don't go to sleep on me now, I'll throw something at you. James 1.4, I'm going to read 3 again. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but, the, but let patience have its perfect work. What? That you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, he's not talking about, I know some of you set up real strong. You say, that's me, perfect. He's not talking about perfect sinfulness. He's not talking about that because let me tell you, you ain't never going to get there. You're not never going to get to perfect sinfulness. He's talking about perfect. He's talking, that word there, the Greek word actually means whole, complete. That's what it means. See? So I can stand before him without guilt and shame on me. See, he's talking about, I'm going to bring you to a place where, where you don't get tangry. That's what I'm working on. Let's see what he says here. I think I have one. But let your patience have perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Spiritual maturity is what he's trying to bring us into. James 3, 2. For we all stumble... Huh? What about that guy who says he has no sin? For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in, in word, he is a perfect man. He is a complete man. That's what he's talking about. Able to abide the whole body. Who can do that? Let's see a hand. Who can hold back that whole body? I don't have a taker? That's some tough stuff right there. Huh? James wants to teach you how to walk. James wants to teach you how to walk in a way that is suitable to God. It's not that hard to do, but it is that hard to do. Does that make sense? Paul says, I do what I know not to do, but what I know not to do, that I do. Oh, what a wretched man I am. That's what Paul says. Man. James says we can do it. 1 Peter 5.10 says, But may the God of all grace who called you to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Huh? Settle you. That's what I need. I need some settling. I need some calming. I think a lot of us need that. That settlement means that, that completeness. That, that you know? Huh? It's good to go home and know you had a good day. It's good to go home and sit in your recliner and say, man, I know I did pretty good today. Yeah. If I was Catholic, you know how many Hail Marys I'd have to say? Man. Woo. I think that's what they do, isn't it? They say 500 Hail Marys. Woo. That's all. I'd have to be standing in the corner all day long. You know what? Man. But God wants to get you settled. He wants to get you calm. He wants to get you in a place where that you're living in a way that is suitable to Him. Okay? Never day in perfect. But when you get to start getting to that place, I tell people in prison all the time, I say, I say you just hang with it. You just stick with it. You just keep doing it. You just keep walking it out. One of these days, you're going to throw your feet over that bed and you're going to look down and you're going to say, man, how in the world did I get to here? How in the world... Did I get to where I'm at today? And it's only by the grace of God. It's only by the grace of God. I was sitting in a meeting, I was sitting in a meeting two weeks ago, a prison meeting, and Pastor Albert was sitting beside me, and he stands up in front of everybody. He says, You see this guy right here? Twelve years ago, I didn't even want to be around him. Your own cousin. Tell you, he's scared to be around you. That's a shame, man. The Bible tells me that the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. See, I never knew that I was crazy. I never knew that I was wild. James 1.5. This is the cool part. This is where it's going to get good. Oh, man, I'm out of time. Why don't y'all tell me to hush up? All right, let's go. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Man, wisdom. 
wisdom. He's not talking about that you be the smartest person in the room. He's not talking about you be Mr. It. He's talking about you being able to walk in a way that is suitable to God. He's acting that you understand how to apply all God's knowledges in your life so that you can be clean and unspotted in the day of Christ. That's the wisdom he's trying to lay on you. I see people trying to read the Bible, trying to learn all they can learn, all they can learn. You better put it in your life. That's the best thing you can do. The best wisdom and knowledge you can do is apply it to your life. There's nothing wrong with learning it. Don't get me wrong. But the best thing you can do is to apply it to your life. Uh-oh. James 3.13. Who is wise? Huh, I asked you that a while ago. Who is wise? An understanding among you. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. James 3.14, just a couple of chapters over, says, But if you have bitter envy, self-seeking in your heart, remember that word heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. James 3.16, For where envy and self-seeking exist, Confusion and evil things are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first perfect, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, willing to yield. I can't, I, it's hard for me to do that. I'm learning that. I'm learning how to turn the other cheek. It's hard for me to get hit on this side and not hit back. But I'm learning. I'm learning. That's the trials and tribulations that you go through. That's the joy that you get out of it. Because one day, I'm going to be able to control it. One day, I'm going to be able to hold on to it. Peaceful, gentle, willing, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. Full of mercy and good fruits. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I'm going to let that because we all know that. I'm, going to, I'm trying to get us somewhere. I've got a couple of minutes here. So we see, we, see that, we see that James is talking about wisdom. Do we not see that James is talking about wisdom? He's, he's telling you the way that you get through them trials and them tribulations, the way you get through all that suffering, all that pain that you're going through, you just lean on the Lord and learn to let Him guide your path. That's the wisdom James is talking about. We're about out of time. They cut me short because last time I ran 15 or 20 minutes over. They said, they said, boy, you only got 45 minutes this, year, this month. <laughs> I want to read you something, though. I want to read you this. And I want you to, I want you to hold on to that wisdom part. And I'm going to kind of, this is not on the board. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of try to preach this. I'm not going to preach this to you. I'm going to kind of read it. Uh, I'm a pre-teacher, okay? I, I'll preach at you and teach at you at the same time. I hope that I can spit something out that you might grab a hold of it and take back out there. You understand me? You can go home and learn this through the Holy Spirit. But God sometimes gives me something that I go, oh, I need to knock that off of my life. or I need to try. And that's what I try to give you in ways that you can take home and do the same thing. That is the most important thing to me at all. And all of all. I'm going to teach this on the next time I preach on Sunday. I'm going to teach this. But I want to read this to you. Because we're talking about faith, and we're talking about wisdom. We're talking about the knowledge of God inside of us, taking everything that He t teaches us to do, and then learning how to do it. This is in Ephesians 1.15. If you'd like to turn there, you can go there. Ephesians 1.15. And this is Paul talking. This is not James. James wrote one epistle, and then uh, he wrote that letter in Acts. And... Uh, but uh, he, he came on fire after he, he, after he started believing in Christ, after he seen the resurrected Christ, he came on fire for God. And he was, he was, he was the head of the church and all kinds of stuff. But this is Paul. And this is a pray, prayer for spiritual wisdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? Prayer for spiritual wisdom. Ephesians 1.15, everybody there? 
Amen. Therefore, also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is what you ought to be praying for your kids for. This is what you ought to be praying for your brother-in-law that's a drunk. That's what you ought to be praying for your kids that are on drugs. That's what you need to be praying for your husband for, that he come into the full wisdom and revelation of knowledge of Jesus Christ. When that happens, everything else falls off of them. Do you hear what I'm saying? When they grab a hold of that, and they've got it, everything else falls off of them just like water off a duck's back. Huh? Did Paul know what he's talking about? Listen to this next one. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That Greek word for understanding is the same word they use for heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? Huh? I called, I called uh, Jim, wherever he's at, the other day, and he said, hey, do we have worship for Sunday, Wednesday? He said, yeah, we got worship. He said, you want me to give you the song this? You want? I said, no. I trust the Lord, whatever he's going to have, sing. What, y'all sing whatever he has. What was the first song they opened with? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Paul sung that 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, he says, the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened that you might know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance. Huh? What a way to pray for somebody. Huh? I've got about two minutes left. And I want everybody just to gather right here. I want everybody to come right here. And I just want us all to put hands on each other. And I want us to stand as a church. I want us to stand as a body, one together. And everybody just put a hand on somebody and we're going to pray. And, and just put a hand on somebody where everybody connects here. Come on over here, Brother Bobby. Come on over here, Brother. We all in here? Sound booth? Come on, sound booth. Come on. You're part of the church. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, Keep going guys. A little bit more. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. We all, everybody got everybody there and everybody holding on to somebody? Grab somebody there, Mark. I want everybody circled up. Grab somebody there, everybody. All right. Father God, we just come before you. We thank you, Father, that, that we are your church. We thank you that we are your hands and feet, Father God. You said that where two or more are gathered, you're there. And we just thank you for coming and having your way tonight. Father, we pray over each one of us here. We pray that you will enlighten us, Father God, that you will allow the spirit of wisdom to fall on us, that we may come to the full knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father God. Help us, Father God, represent who we are in you, Father God. And just continue to keep your hedge of protection over our children as they're out there in Dallas and having fun. Father, we just pray the same prayer over them that they might come to the full knowledge and wisdom of you, Father. We thank you for all that you do, and we continue to ask your guidance throughout each phase of our life. And we give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that word, brother. Oh, yeah. Love no you. problem. No problem.